Dark Pines is the first book of the Tuva Mudison series. So it's kind of a cross between Twin Peaks and Broadchurch. It's set in a small, isolated town in central Sweden. And on the first day of the elk hunt, a body is found deep in the woods. Tuva Mudison, a young, deaf journalist from the local newspaper, sets out in her pickup truck to investigate the crime. An elk emerges from the overgrown pines and it is monstrous. Half a ton, maybe more. I stamp the brake, my truck juddering as the winter tires bite into gravel and then I nudge my ponytail and switch on my hearing aids. I punch the horn with my fist. Noise floods my head, but it's not the real sound, not like you'd hear. I get a noise amplified by the plastic curls behind my ears. The horn does its job and the bull elk trots away down the track. I speed up a little and follow him and my heart's beating too hard and too fast. My eyes flit between the windscreen and the rear view mirror. I'm trying to look in front and behind at the same time. And then there's a flash of movement in the trees, something gray, a person maybe, but then it's gone. And that's when I hear the gunshot. The book's set in October. And I should say right now that I live at the center of a huge Swedish forest. I have done for the last six years. And October is kind of an unsettling time of year. There are lone hunters walking through the pines, carrying their rifles. The days are shortening. Uh, the rainfall is incessant and everything is getting darker. So I find October a really good time of year to set the book. The wipers squeak as they get going and I reverse out of Honkvist driveway and head down the track towards the top of the hill. As I turn to start the descent, I feel something bang in the back of the truck in the open bay. I frown, trying to remember if I left anything in there. I look back through the rear view mirror, but it is dark and the rear windscreen is dotted with raindrops. I click on the rear wiper and that's when I see him. I'm at the base of the hill when he starts thumping the rear windscreen. I can feel it and I can hear it, fists smashing against the glass. He's trying to break through to the back seats. Something else I enjoy is tension. I don't really enjoy gratuitous gore or violence. So setting the book in Sweden, the nature kind of gifts me an element of menace and tension, which is really helpful. The soft wool, springy in my fingers, feels like the good years before everything changed. It feels safe. I slip off the cardboard ring and pull out the frayed end of the yarn and loop it around a rough spruce trunk at about waist height. I loop it three times and tie a strong knot and pull on it to make sure it's secure. And then I turn and walk into the woods, my lifeline unraveling in my hands as I go deeper, like a potholer down a cave. It gets darker and cooler and more uneven, but I have my wool. I have to slap my own cheeks every now and then to kill mosquitoes, and the buzzing of their tiny wings near my hearing aids drives me crazy at times. But I'm not scared, just annoyed like any normal person would be, like you would be. It's wet underfoot. I look down to check where my boots are and see something under my right boot, just as I start to put my weight down on it. I lift my foot and stand back and see a bird. Its eyes stare up at me, black as gemstones. 